So, what you're trying to say is that you fell here from another world? But when you wanted to leave and go on to the next world, your path was blocked by some unknown god? Outlanders, your journey ends here. Who are you? The sustainer of heavenly principles. The irrigation of mankind ends now. Just like that, a god took away my sister. Some kind of seal was cast upon me, and I lost my power. So while we used to travel from world to world, we are now trapped here. How many years ago was it? I don't know. But I intend to find out. When I woke, I was all alone. Until I met you two months ago. Yeah, Paimon really owes you for that. Otherwise, Paimon likely would have drowned. So Paimon will do her best to be a great guy. We should head off. Let's get going. Don't be afraid. It's all right now. I'm back. Is he talking to a dragon? <gasps> Who's there? Thank you. 
sky. You've actually got the power to go up against the dragon. Are you a new ally? <laughs> or a new storm? Jean, what's the hurry? I thought we agreed to meet them here. There have been sightings of storm terror outside the city. Once we meet, we must... Relax, I'll lend a hand when the time comes. Jean, I've brought them. <sighs> Quite rewarding, no? We've seized another temple from Storm Terror's grasp. I can take care of the rest here. You go take care of other things while I'm at it. See you later then, bye-bye! There's no way Hilly Turtles organized an ambush like this themselves. Not with their limited mental capacity. <laughs> Thus you were behind this. Knights of Aphonius, always so inefficient. Agree to disagree, but your involvement in this just made things a whole lot more interesting. wisp of wind brushed across the land. Birds that yearned for the sky had wings, but no way to fly. They asked the animal god, how can we reach the heavens? To which the animal god replied, you have yet to find that which is most important. As the god spoke, the wind thrust the seeds of a dandelion high into the sky. The birds thrust out their wings, but the breeze was all too mild, leaving them to stumble across the earth. So they went to the gorge, where the wind showed off its wild and incomparable strength. They threw themselves off the cliff and flapped their wings amongst the howling winds until they were able to fly freely in the sky. To the animal god they went to gleefully say, We understand now. All we needed was a stronger wind to fly. In reply, the animal god said, What you lacked was not wind, but courage. It is courage that has allowed you to become the first flying birds of this world.
What is to be sung transpired in days of yore, when the Divine Archons still walked the Earth? A dragon cast his curious gaze on the world below, as he parted from the heavens that gave his birth. The dragon sought truth amongst common folk, but mortal trifles only fogged his mind. The wind-borne bard strummed his strings dulce, and the holy lyre answered his questions kind. The dragon was but a child full of wonder, and soared the heavens free from care. The bard's songs invited him to sing along, for he yearned to let all perceive him fair. Enchanting legends the bard and dragon were, but the tides of despair soon engulfed the land. The lion fang perished, and the falcon flag slept, as a vile dragon approached Mondstadt in the lone stand. Over the cathedral loomed death and his friends. Of the people's agony, the bard soon sang. The soaring dragon heeded his grave calls, and amidst the windstorms a brutal war sprang. Blood of venom sent the sky dragon into slumber, only to awake to be expelled in abhor. Why do people in this age loathe me so? But the holy liar replied no more. Wrath and woe, vigor and venom, poured from the dragon's bitter eyes. The dragon's curse sprawled in silence, but the liar could no longer soothe his cries. He was once such a gentle child, now so full of rage and suffering. I also came across a teardrop crystal. Can you purify it? in your eyes. Sadness that speaks of your yearning for this song. We are communicating. Huh? No! Don't get bored! Do not be fooled by him, dear dragon. He loves you to rot alone. Now he attempts to deceive you once more. Our Beethoven.
since we flew like this together. Huh, Devalin? Just now. Why? Why did you not ask me to protect you like the last time? Me not wanting you to listen to the Abyss Order doesn't mean that you have to listen to me. Freedom, if demanded of you by an Archon, is really no freedom at all. Is this the power of the Animal Archon? But I am no longer part of the Four Winds. Even if that's so, you still protected us regardless. Now spread your wings of freedom and go with my blessing. And so, the Storm Terror threat was quelled. I clarified the misunderstanding to the citizens of Mondstadt and let them know that they are safe. To them, it seems Storm Terror attacked Mondstadt out of nowhere and then vanished just as quickly. They must be finding the whole ordeal very confusing. However, winds change their course. Someday, they will blow towards a brighter future. Should get going. That trick I used to repair the Holy Liar. <laughs> I mean, the magic I used isn't going to hold forever, you know. What? <laughs> you tone deaf bard! Hey, don't go! At last, Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. <laughs> Scurrying through the streets looking for leftovers? Mondstadt calls this a god? Uh, resident rodent beats invasive vermin! <laughs> Don't you dare speak back to me, insolent bard. 
absolute archon of Mondstadt. How impotent you've become. That smirk you wear looks out of place. Did you steal it from your master's face? You should have held your tongue. This is a gnosis. Wouldn't huh? be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Beauty is a waste when the beholder has no taste. <laughs> Fenty! <laughs> well, we have what we came here for. Come, before our dear Favonian friends arrive. Leave nothing for them to find. <laughs> Once, there was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. From that kingdom came a crowned heir, tasked with seeking out the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. The first crowned heir began her journey of seeking the Pearl. But she was deceived, and the memory of her noble origins faded. She now believed that she was the queen of the Kingdom of Darkness. But take heart. A second crowned heir had already taken up the path where the first had stumbled. This is the story of your journey. Of your tale to be told. <coughs> The Dark Knight hero is Master D. Luke. Huh? Ah, there you are. Dealing with you will be the easy part. The hour is upon us.
Rex Lapis have been killed. Seal the exits. To run. Hey, buddy, hold still. Stop! Stop! Come with me. To the blind, <laughs> everything may not be as it appears. Welcome back, sir. You honor us with your patronage. Mr. Zhongli is awaiting your arrival in the room you booked. They say that when Lady Ningguang ponders important affairs, she retreats to her jade chamber with none but her three closest confidants in tow. Why brings she these trusted three to sift through sources, dig through documents, looking for information? Piece by piece, facts and figures paint a picture on the walls of the chamber. But well before the wall is filled, Lady Ningguang's mind is made up. Having made her call, she has every last document shredded, and whoosh, she scatters the shavings out her window. Ah, look at them, how they billow in the wind like a sudden swirling blizzard. As the fragments fall, Traces of text flicker before the eyes of the merchants of Liyuan, like ink stains and white snow. The saying goes, the rarest treasures in the land are the words brought by the paper snow. For the words of the Tianquan have the power to move mountains, and all throughout the land know it. over Mondstadt remains unclouded. I do not know if I, or the rest of the world, as you had hoped for, have become stronger. Huh? Huh? 
Hans Archibald. Uh, my true name? How did you know? <laughs> the wind. I can hear the wind blowing in the Mare Javari. I always believed you existed. Will you hand me your old friend's spirit? <laughs> In old Mondstadt transpired the story to be told, where a tyrant ruled. I met a boy, not that old. The liar he played, and for a song he sought. But storm walls blocked blue sky, he was sincerely distraught. I do so wish to see the birds in flight, said he, his strong eyes filling with light. But his voice was lost in the howling wind's churn, for the whirlwind takes and gives not in return. The true sky and songs that cageless soar, were they not wishes worth fighting for? So the boy turned, extending his hand, let us cast down the tyrant and his walls from this land. The young boy raised in the flag of revolt, and I threw myself into freedom's tumult. Victorious were we who fought to be free. Gods fell, winds whipped, nations shook violently. In the smoke, a despot met his doom. And we watched as his great tower fell none too soon. Mondstadt began anew, the story passed down. And since then, never has another worn its crown. <sighs> Finally! I almost fell asleep waiting. <laughs> As usual, my predictions are correct. You, yes you, come with me. Huh? Are you some sort of door-to-door -door fortune teller? <laughs> Sorry, but we're not really interested. <sighs> You're not from this world, are you? <gasps> There was a meteor shower last night. The strike zone was very large, covering the entire countryside of Mondstadt and Liyue. The meteorites seem to harbor a strange power. A power that sends any who touch them into a deep sleep. The guild believes the meteorites to be highly dangerous. Hi! Uh. Sounds interesting. Mind if I join you? What ho? We meet again, Vagrant of Inazuma. My rat and I were just... The first time the Millilith were present, I had to forego the chance to strike down Mondstadt's savior. This time was a perfect moment. I was mere seconds away. But who was that mage? She could not have known who I am. Perhaps her powers are real to her things unseen. Soldiers! Sir! Sir. Find them, and when you do, Another one? My lord! It's happening again. This is the largest one we've seen so far. They just keep coming. But so be it. Move out. Change of plan. Your prior objective remains in force. Continue to research the meteorites. My lord, leave them to us. We will make short work of them. Are you deaf or just stupid? 
When did I give you the right to issue your own orders? My, my apologies, my lord. Now move out and complete your objectives as assigned. With ropes, we can scale mountains. With boats, we can sail the seas. By age 40, I had conquered every last domain. Pylos Peak alone defeated me. As an adventurer, and well, maybe in other ways too. Now I am approaching the end of my life. Many times I have sat and stared up at that peak as the boundless snow slowly engulfed me. It is a beast without weakness. The merciless face of the world, it fills me with fear. And when an adventurer loses courage, they can no longer climb mountains. My mountaineering days may be over, but I have a greater ambition now. Humans create tools to conquer nature, and when nature conquers them in return, they create better tools. Where our legs cannot take us, maybe our tools can. And when tools fail us, perhaps wings can carry us instead. My dear friend, I leave you my designs for the wings of incompletion. Against the unknown, humanity stands as one. To be alive is to seek, to set foot in every place that the eye can see. I have little time remaining, though the wind has not yet come for my soul. But between us and your children, students, and friends, I believe that someone will reach that place at last. Not bad. Your swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. You were just playing with Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide-eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected. <laughs> well then, I'll be taking Morax's gnosis now. Huh? <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You... You beat me to it, didn't you? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Lyra, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. Huh? He's... he's already gone! That guy is fast! Uh, what's going on? Interlopers are no more. Now we may commit ourselves fully. Be careful now. The Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh, what do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. Give me another ten seconds, Tusser. Still hiding. Huh. Now who's the cheater? <laughs> All right. Ten seconds, that's it. 
Thousands of years ago, the Adepti and I fought against the turmoil that plagued every corner of this land. <gasps> Guyan Stone Forest, where I sealed many gods with my spears. After so long, naught but folk tales remain. Oh, Sire, you and I were foes, but our ancient grudge is but a bygone memory now. May that which Havria has left behind be yours to subsume. And thus another spark of divinity departs from Liyue. My legacy shall now be left to those who come after to debate. Just a little longer. Huh? Uh, uh, fire? F fire! Warmth! Wait! Watch out! Benevolent among all Adepti are the Chilin. They drink only spring water and eat only whole grain. But perhaps the mountainous dwellings of Adepti in Joyung Karst might be too lonely for her human side. Under moonlight did one see her last. She stood by the precipice's edge, and upon the mist-veiled mountains she gazed. Her thin figure was immersed in the vast sea of clouds. One noticed her loneliness and sought to convince her to go back to the human world. But just then, she said thus. Leoa Harbor feels even lonelier than Juyun Karst. When I look at the sea of clouds in Juyun Karst, I merely feel the loneliness of a solitary cloud gazer. When I step into the sea of people in Liyue, I feel the loneliness of an inhuman that doesn't belong in the human world. In ancient times, Liyue was a land of misery, where the shadow of evil loomed large. As slain gods festered, their vengeful wrath cursed the world, manifesting in infernal forms. When demons stirred, miasmas, Monsters and mutations infested the land. Then Rex Lapis summoned the Yakshas to vanquish the demons. They swore an oath. Restore order through slaughter. Purge evil through battle. To this, we dedicate our lives. Eons of bloodshed later, karmic debt weighed upon them. Phantom wrath seeping into their broken souls. They went mad with fear turned on each other, or succumbed to the darkness. Of the five foremost Yakshas, death came to three, while the fourth vanished without a trace. In the millennia since, one conqueror of demons remains the sole surviving Yaksha in the mortal realm. And only on moonlit nights, in the glow from Guyan, 
and in the sound of the Dihua flute is his memory preserved. meet again. Huh? Though we need not rush, brother. I have more than enough time to wait for you. <laughs> we have always had enough time. Festival originated in the Crown of the North, the City of Freedom. Oh, we gotta bring enough supplies this time. Otherwise, you'll go hungry again. <laughs> so, if you're asking me... Unofficial business? We're grateful to you. As are we to you. Funny, we haven't gotten together for a meal in a while. It's been so busy lately. What should we do on this day? <gasps> Mr. Albedo! How's the research going? Well, have a look at this. No. Of course, any good tavern offers bar snacks. Hmm, really? Hmm. How should we do it? Who should we do it for? Quietly? <laughs> or boldly? Make the first move, or trust a chance. Huh? My answer is this. So long as we can both share fond memories, it doesn't matter. Let the heart decide. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm afraid that this whole tunnel is the fruit of their strenuous labor. Digging a tunnel to this ancient seal. Had they not been discovered, they would undoubtedly persevere until the gate. In our last tale, Rex Lapis was walking alone in the mountains. He heard a remote voice, unlike any other, coming from a crack in the earth. Most of the ancient Geo life forms that live below Liyue are blind, having not seen the sunlight for an age. The voice was sometimes sad and song-like. Other times it was loud and thunderous. The Lord of Geo searched here and there before finally unearthing a strange stone from the bedrock. That's how Ejdaha was. I answered his wish and took him above ground. The Lord of Geo took pity on the rock spirit and carved it into a magnificent work of craftsmanship, a vivid representation of a dragon. I bestowed him with a pair of eyes to see the world and came to an agreement with him. With his fingers, he made two eyes, quicker than words could tell. Lightning flashed and thunder roared, and a living, breathing dragon soared into the clouds. I agreed to let him live among the people above ground. But if the day ever came when he brought ruin to order, he would once again be sealed in the dark. The dragon accompanied the Lord of Geo, fighting campaigns alongside him in the four corners of the world. We have a saying to eulogize these events. The crash of a spear brought billowing dust. The mountains and waters made way at the sound. The sight of a dragon bestowed with a touch the promise of rainwater blessing the ground.
was once a good friend of mine. One day he asked me about a sword art of which he had heard, the Musono Hitotachi. I told him it can only be witnessed when divine punishment is administered. It is the pinnacle of the Raiden Shogun's skill, a symbol of ultimate power. But he replied, there must be one who can withstand it. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. Then, the Vision Hunt Decree arrived. People's aspirations were stripped away as the Raiden Shogun began to construct her ideal of eternity. While I was fleeing from place to place, I heard that my friend had challenged the Vision Hunters to a duel before the throne. A solemn yet brutal challenge. The defeated faced divine punishment while the victors gain a second chance. Perhaps he thought he of all people should make a stand. Coming face to face with the Musono Hitotachi was all that he truly desired after all. When I arrived at Tenchukaku, the duel was over. I heard his sentence of divine punishment, his severed blade hitting the ground. Perhaps that was the glory he had yearned to witness. In his last moments, what expression was on his face? Before I knew it, I had stepped forward and snatched the dying vision and was running from the scene. All I knew was that I mustn't let his hope, which burned so brightly, become buried among the ice-cold statue of a god.
Traveler, huh? there's something that I'd like to do. If you could spare me yet another moment. on me. of using elemental energy without a vision. You are an exception, it appears. Exceptions. The enemy of eternity. inlaid upon this statue. Wake up, wake up! 
Shogun, who was that? Seize him under the decree. Huh? Next time, <sighs> I will strike twice. <laughs> my lady. Charge! I just hope you can afford all these mercs you've gathered! <laughs> oh, Kazuha! We meet again, old friend. Embrace the anger. Embrace it! The wrath of the gods fills this factory, and it feeds on your anger. <laughs> uh, what's happening? Get up! Huh? 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 Huh?
I am a Snezhnaian diplomat. You know what happens if you lay a finger on I me. I swear, you. if you strike me, I will make sure... The Fatui will make sure that your precious Inazuma... Stop! I order you! And you! Filthy rats! All of you! You are the enemy of eternity. <laughs> but as the victor, I acknowledge your honor. Therefore, I shall allow you to leave Tenshukaku alive. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. We meet again. <laughs> Dear me, aren't you cutting it rather close? Hmm? Miko, this was your doing? Now, now. Don't forget who taught you how to place your consciousness in objects. Surely you don't think your ambition alone is enough to shake Ace will, do you? Though you alone are here, they too have ambitions, which they long since entrusted to you. Now then, close your eyes. We can abolish the vision hunt decree. When lightning flashes, it casts a shadow. My name means shadow. With my blade, I purged all obstacles to progress. And yet, something was lost with each step forward. In the end, I even lost her. The tales are still retold in the shade of every Thunder Sakura. But the wounds left on our nation by that terrible loss still ache. Never stop searching, even if only for a brief flash of light. If nothing else, 
We have the present moment. She said that once. But I've seen the nation strike forward and lose everything to the heavenly principles. Perhaps only if time stands still will the lightning's glow never fade. The present moment is a fragile illusion. Only eternity can bring us closer to the heavenly principles. I am no longer the shadow. Mine is the most supreme and noble form. Let power over the realm be vested within me. In this form shall I honor my subject's dream. For a land of eternity, unchanging forevermore. As promised, the Raiden Shogun abolished the Vision Hunt Decree. Finally, her people's wishes penetrated her locked heart. Beyond the plain of Euthymia, she saw what eternity means in the eyes of the world. When one's fervent ambition burns brightly, the gods will cast their gaze upon you. Some ambitions have the power to heal wounds, to bring victory, to inspire hope. But some ambitions outlive their masters long after the soul ascends. They remain as they were in the beginning. Burning bright and true for all eternity. Kujo clan's honor was forged with courage, tempered with integrity, and shines beyond life and death. Show me whether your blade can bear the weight of your name. Ready to learn, almighty Shogun. Another anomaly in eternity. Nevertheless, it appears that the Kujo honor still courses through your veins. Comrades, never trust the Kujo! Let's get them! <laughs> uh, protect Madame Kujo! <laughs> Number 16, no wait, 67, or is it 73? Uh, which one is it?
Chosius, god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp, fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended and his wits greatly reduced, thus his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves, and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Nature provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive.
Over half our trained samurai are wounded, and our Shikigami losses are far greater than anticipated. Besides, the outside situation is beginning to stabilize. Do we really need to keep pursuing this ultimate attainment? Why so apprehensive? This is all within my expectation. Harunosuke, forgive my directness, but she's not coming back. All I ever wanted was to assist her descendants and guard this territory. <sighs> now that our targets no longer exist, and those needing our protection are finally safe, then perhaps our sworn mission has indeed come to an end. I always believed that I would stand guard in this place forever, if time permitted. I almost fooled myself with such a notion. I hope you never make the same mistake. Don't worry, Haranosuke. I know everything that you've done for Inazuma. Your efforts need not be judged by others. The same goes for my existence. <laughs> Bestowing you with intelligence that you should know human emotion, it would seem this was the right decision. In the end, it is you that have enlightened me. Rosy-cheeked in the morning, bleached bones by dusk. How so very true. I have nothing left to keep me. Shiki Taisho, my friend, you have completed your assignment magnificently. As for me, I need wait no longer. I will set out again in search of a new purpose. Then this is farewell, Harunosuke. Be safe in your travels. Huh? remember everything. Haranosuke didn't abandon me. It was I that persuaded him. <sighs> and helped him escape the labyrinth of his heart. I flipped another insignia just outside the camp. Wrong again. So your bad luck is all used up. We'll be down the mountain in no time. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly. Today's the day. My story, yes, I should have known. 
master's failed specimen in the dragon's belly. This is where the story truly begins. <laughs> if we switched places, if you were the survivor, then as the abandoned experiment, the failure of the primordial human project, I'd want to replace you too. I would replicate your appearance, study your alchemy, and create miraculous life forms to divert your attention. I would wait for the right moment, then dispose of you and the Traveler, the sole person to have known your secret. And then, I could finally experience the joy of being brought into the world. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The blue oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an oni. The crimson oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. <laughs> so the blue oni said to the crimson oni, Akka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. Take care of this. There are still people in danger. Go, help them. What? <laughs> hey, I got this. Come on! <laughs> Forget about me! Just go! It's what I deserve! Ah, oh, shut up, would ya? time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni wanted to be friends with the humans, so the blue oni played the role of the naughty kid. And then he left. After a long time, the crimson oni was living happily with the humans, but in his heart, he wanted to bring the Blue Oni back home. The Crimson Oni didn't know where to find the Blue Oni. His search took him up the highest mountains and across the widest rivers. He found many traces of the Blue Oni, but the more he found, the clearer it became. The Blue Oni was hiding on purpose. So just as the blue oni had once done, the crimson oni left him a letter. Dear Owl, I've made 
lots of human friends now, and I want to have a big party for everyone. I want all my friends to be there. That means you too, Al. If you don't want to meet me, you can just watch from a distance. The blue Oni snuck back to the village and hid in the shadows. He saw the great feast and roaring fire and longed to join in. But though his stomach rumbled, the blue Oni remembered the oath of old and kept his distance. Suddenly, he jumped. The crimson Oni was right behind him. <laughs> hey, you're finally back. Come on, I'll introduce you. It's time everyone met my best friend. Avenger of the Vortex, Beisht. Who is that? Osile's wife. Final follower of the Overlord of the Vortex. Sounds like you knew this was coming! Beto sensed something was stirring in the deep. She warned me months ago. Knowing she harbors hatred toward the Jade Chamber, I chose to rebuild it now as a way of drawing her out. Got it. Well, <laughs> let's go fetch the Adepta. No. Huh? In this human age, the people of Liyue must find a way to overcome this crisis on our strength alone! Child, your life brings nothing but disaster to us all. At least if you die, I can bring her back. The day you learn how to use your strength for the good of others is the day that you can truly become part of human society.
披冠，到这里本该接近尾声。但今日我再添一笔，唱一祝未平，一朝未平不是此鸟之音，何其如此，空灵离离见流星，只见无愁绪。彼时鹤归，茫茫天地无依靠，孤身离去。今日再会，新朋旧友坐满堂，共聚此时。For a moment, don't go anywhere. Huh? Must be something important. Had her personal tailor make it for me. Said it's an imported style. Well, do you like it? Wow, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's time, traveler. Please enjoy the grand finale of this year's lantern rite, the fireworks show. Check you out. Looking pretty fancy. Only a true treasure catches the eye of Captain Beto. Seems I've struck gold with this one. Buys you. Sorry to trouble you again this year. <laughs> no trouble at all. Uh, lantern right. <laughs> Happy lantern right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> 
Happy lantern <laughs> run! Remember to focus constantly on your heartfelt wishes when you enter inside. <laughs> Only if you are strong enough can I deliver you to the right destination. that blesses the people, in this moment new to the world and yet to be known. When to plant it, where it shall bloom, she who brings it into being must let her heart and dreams decide. Grant it life, eh? Is this... is it really? Hmm. <sighs> Eternity extends time into infinity. Dreams illuminate each moment within. When both shine in unison, the sacred Sakura blooms from the darkness, finally free from the clutches of the heavenly principles. Now the nightmare has dissipated, and reality is made whole. The vision we both yearn for is still further ahead. My only regret is that I cannot witness Inazuma's future. Nor can I walk this journey with you. <sighs> Do you know, A? I am so happy right now, because my final wish has now come true. Your polearm once protected me from countless calamities. For this, I've always felt indebted to you. Though I could never repay you in full, this sacred Sakura will buy you some time until you are ready to awaken and embrace the new. What do you think? Did it do the trick? <laughs> uh, this time, it really is goodbye, eh? of the yokai. They haven't been able to relax and soar through the air like this for a long time. Come with me. You all right, little one? You look a little nervous. It's just, Paimon's never seen anything like this before. Whoa, they've really blocked out the It 
It does look a little intimidating, doesn't it? But I know them. They may be loud and brash at times, but they are good and brave souls. Even after losing their lives in a brutal war, they have never given in to grief or despair. Alas, their time is short. come to an end. <laughs> Since you're sorry to see them leave, why don't you do the recital along with me? Oh Hakushin, cause of this enchantment, in reverence I perform this rite. In reverence I perform this rite. To be a guiding light. Recite the secret spells of Lady Kitsune tonight, and our wishes will come true. <gasps> oh, Hakushin, cause of this enchantment. I perform this rite to be a guiding light. Your unrivaled power will be honored eternally. Sai, you asked if I was doing well. Really, every day is a happy day for me. But watching you all leave now, I can't help but feel a little lonely. Mm. Just a little, of course. The amplification device. Find a way! 
to stop that thing. Apologies, Captain Dainsliff, Twilight Sword. Back then, I failed you and failed to protect our people. <laughs> no. For 500 years, you have faithfully done your duty. To this day, I am proud of you all. <sighs> Conria didn't fall, did it? Since you're still here. Correct. <laughs> so, no need to revive the homeland. Without looking at the board, you've ruined my strategy in one move. Amazing. Hmm. Now what should I do next? Ayaka, Toma, it's us! Huh? <laughs> hey guys, it's been a while. If you're looking for my lady, I'm afraid she's not here right now. Oh? Huh? That voice. Toma, would that happen to be the Traveler? Uh, yes. <laughs> Greetings, Traveler. Ayaka speaks of you constantly. Finally, today is the day. I am head of the Kamisato clan and Yashiro commissioner, Kamisato Ayato. Long ago, Inazuma had five legendary poets. People bestowed upon them the title of the Five Kasen. One year, the poet Suiko made his way to Tenchukaku and presented the Kasen's work for the Shogun's perusal. But a page from the works of Aoi no Okina had been torn out, and Suiko was questioned regarding the matter. Suiko pleaded guilty. He admitted to drinking at the tavern the night before, and vaguely recalled a mysterious figure approaching while he was intoxicated. That figure was none other than Aoi no Okina himself. This turn of events had begun with an unnamed individual, under whose coercion Aoi no Okina was forced to take drastic measures to retrieve a page of poetry. He knew nothing of this individual's true intentions. All he knew was that the poem had to do with an old acquaintance, Akahito. Akahito had once belonged to the Five Kasen. Each poem he composed, he marked with a scarlet red seal, hence the Aka in his name. Such a distinguished writer was he, and yet one of the poems he had submitted the previous year was found to be plagiarized. Akahito was exiled for his crimes, and only four of the five Kasen remained. Sumizome went over Akihito's poems and noticed that the plagiarized poem lacked his seal. She immersed his poetry in a stream nearby and only on the plagiarized poem did the ink run. Aoi no Okina passed by and witnessed Sumizome's doing, which he then recorded in a poem. Thus transpired the events of Suiko's poetry submission, and this is where the story comes to an end. 
Have a taste of this! Okay, so I didn't tear the whole place down. <coughs> but check it out, new path. <laughs> if you need a hero, I'm the man for the job. Nico! Should have seen this coming. Stars align, bestow your light, evil purged by thunder's might. Spirit curbed, Numa surge, by dictum divine, heed these words. Do as I command! Aha! Uh -huh. The fantastic compass is an amplifier. Maintain this energy level and we may stand a chance. I will maintain the energy flow. Understood. Everyone, stand back. I shall hold the line by sealing the surface. As Yaksha's, we must fight for this world. General Alatus, falling in! This trip may be dangerous, yet you insist on going. I have guarded this place for several hundred years. Only to seek the nameless Yaksha do I request your approval. Hmm. <clears throat> Hmm. 
Anogius, where have you been? <sighs> Brother Yakshai, you're confused again. I've told you countless times, I am Boyang, a thaumaturge who fought with you in the chasm. Boyang? Boyang? You are Boyang, but who am I? <laughs> Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. No, you have to leave. Uh, nonsense, Brother Yaksha. We're down here for good now. Don't you remember? It's too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal... <gasps> Ah, oh, yes. I'm a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother, are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. <laughs> We're the only two left. Don't go dying on me. <sighs> you know, today I saw my family down here. Clearest day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now, too? Hmm. Boyong, do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously. <sighs> of course, I want to go home. I must have family, too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters? Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? I'm... Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Atlantis, is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's going again. <laughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look, there's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... Remember now, I know you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters have come for me, Boyong. You're, you're awake. At least, at least tell me your name. Brother, brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. <laughs> Bosatius. I... I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make the ultimate sacrifice. Life is like fishing. It cannot be rushed. Whatever you do, impatience will accomplish nothing. I was just like you once, desperate to prove myself. Only later did I realize things do not always turn out the way you plan. But you have to keep calm to carry on. You're still young. Be patient, believe in yourself, and don't look outside yourself to prove your value. Where's Jury these days? It's been a long time since he last paid me a visit. <laughs> Maybe he's just busy. <laughs> well, next time, if he doesn't bring a pot of piping hot fish soup, don't let him in. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you were thinking about, you'll have plenty of time to mull it over in prison. Oh, 
I almost forgot. If the Fatui find out what happened today, prison might not turn out to be the safest place for you. Trying to have friends on both sides, it has a way of turning everyone against you. But right now, I have an opportunity for you. spent. Without him, my eventual demise is inevitable. But if I abandon the future to give everything I have in this moment, my physical form can be forged anew. Everything? You mean... Yes. The cost is my entire consciousness. <laughs> still a chance for Ishii art. Once remade, I will be a valuable resource for your studies. Ishii lives on, and its finest hour is yet to come. Even if I am not the one to prove its might to the Shogun, as long as it is an Ishin blade, crafted by Kaedehara hands, it will still fulfill his final wish. Thank you, son of the Kaedehara clan. Over the years, my real name has been forgotten by all. I'm ashamed to utter it, yet it remains strong in my mind. Kagotsurube Ishin. This name is now yours to keep. Rest in peace. often travel during storms, which means my eyes are often blinded by the rain. Many times, I couldn't even see what was right in front of me. One day, I finally reached the top of the mountain. I looked out with the clouds beneath my feet and only the gentle breeze murmuring in my ears. The highest mountain is a clear and enlightened heart. Here, there is no self, no hatred, no regrets, and no desires. Let's embark on a journey, for I am the breeze. We will meet again, no matter how far along the road. Life has just begun, and maybe the whole world can be my home. One stormy night, a girl found a way to the future in the library. She said to herself, I shall create my dream kingdom. I'll carve mountains and oceans and erect castles and towns. Then she spoke to those who shared her dream. Please be proud of all that is unreal, for we are greater than this world. For our magnificent kingdom is a small and forbidden paradise.
transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night, to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. Academia scum! <laughs> <laughs> huh. Boss! Finally! <sighs> Did you use it? Great! Now we can... Uh -huh. <sighs> Boss? Do not impede our work. Is that understood, all Haytham? Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away! this to our god, the dance of sub -Zerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Milo's dance.
at this hour of the night. <sighs> ah, the triumphant hero returns at last. And to a rather spectacular welcome, even if I do say so myself. You're the outcast, expelled from the academia. Indeed I am. Although these days they tend to call me the Doctor. If you're looking for your researcher friend, she has already been taken into confinement. With some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. The people of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. Oh no! What should we do? These are all just regular people! Leave now! You need to get out of here! But that guy's a Fatui Harbinger! We can't just leave you here! Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru! appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be... the God of Wisdom. It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god, my creator, my mother. Valuing strength above all, she saw no worth in me and I was discarded. The second was a human, my family, my friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans. They can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounce the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> there is no need to fear. The pain will be brief. Your era is coming to an end.
shaking. Wait a second. It's a earthquake. Civilization is born of knowledge, but so too can knowledge be its demise. A disaster caught us unaware. It was knowledge that did not belong to this world. The Scarlet King brought this forbidden knowledge into our world, and it quickly spread like a plague. People's minds were filled with crazed whispers, Dark gray scales spread across their bodies. Even the land was stripped of its vigor. Only a desperate, deathly silence remained. Were it not for greater Lord Ruka Devata from the forests, the damage would have been irreversible. She summoned the priests to build temples and infused into them the divine power of life. The disaster was miraculously tempered, and the embers of our civilization were preserved in Aru village. Alas, the miracle could not last. As long as forbidden knowledge continued to exist, it would forever blight this world. In the end, the proud king of the desert, my eternal lord, chose to sacrifice himself. I have spent my whole life since guarding one of these many temples. But now, my duty is coming to an end. As I close my eyes for the final time, the sight of that noble deity will appear in my vision once more. In helping the Scarlet King to eradicate forbidden knowledge, she exhausted her strength, and her form became that of a small child. How strange. Now that I think of her, I no longer have any fear of death, for I sense that the spirit of life will abide with me during my eternal sleep. Children of the desert, cling no longer to past grievances, but hold tight to the memory of this act of benevolence. Dad, why are they so strict with me? I'm always the only one who gets in trouble. Just leave me alone! Don't worry, I won't damage your precious reputation. All right, Dad. Let's start over. By the way, I finally found an area of research I wish to pursue. Why can't you show even a little leniency? Why? Because we are Matra. Listen. 
Take this, crush it, and place it on the fracture. Listen, Missy. Promise me you'll live on. This is where you must stay. You are our only hope. Forgive me, Kaya. Very good. That's my boy. I will always be proud of you. <sighs> After all the time we spent on it, the wine still isn't ready. <laughs> May as well leave it for our son. Razor. What do you think of that name? Oh, an adventurer's name. Yes. I like it. Razor! Razor! Come on! <laughs> Come on! Who knows if you'll get a chance like this again? Huh? But... but... You said you were going to make peace with your past. Show your father how much uh. you've grown. <laughs> <sighs> Don't be nervous. Everyone at Zubir Theater has your back. Hmm. Uh. Hey, uh -huh. let's go somewhere else. We should give them some space. You sure they'll be okay? I don't know, but... I think we should have faith in them. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. um. oh, yes. Inaya. I have something for you. I'm still learning. It's hardly a masterpiece. But it's yours, if you'll take it. Huh? Um. You don't have to take it. It's fine. Uh, uh. Never mind. Heart to heart, Father. scholar will yearn for the power of a god in a moment of desperation. Aren't you doing the exact same thing as me, Althatham? Unfortunately for you, no god will lend you their power. Azor! He has gone completely insane. Take him to the Matra and exile him to Aru village. Then find someone to take these two to the confinement room. I'll deal with them later. Grand Sage, we've finished all required preparations for Nyagarbaha Day. We may begin to enter the capsules now. Excellent. You may begin.
I've never seen a performance like this. This is incredible. Yeah, but I heard that public performances like these have been banned. I can't believe she's doing this here. Grand Sage, there's some commotion outside. Huh. How uninteresting. Issue the new Prohibition Act from the Akasha to the guards. They'll know what to do. Uh, do you think we should, like, stop her? Let's just watch for a little bit longer. so eager for my birth. I remember you, Boor, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the traveler. Is he knowing and powerful now like greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <gasps> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? <laughs> The day the 
connection is almost complete. Do you even know how many times you've tried to take my Gnosis from me? <sighs> we just concluded the 168th loop. Did you know that in the effort to create you, the people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles? The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? Can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? Huh? Come, traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> All that battle experience! It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them... to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Tricks won't save you. Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A boar. Humans. Filthy humans! yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Ermin's soul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadavata. Huh? This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom, 
peering out to perceive the world. From the earth and from the rain, we perceive its wonders until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground, and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds. All of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness. I'm the one who posed this question, yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Goodbye, people of Sumeru. May you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams. <laughs> you haven't won just yet. This dream is mine! If I go into hiding here, not even an Archon can ever find me. And as long as people yearn for happiness, they will return here and rebuild this paradise! <sighs> hey, Sam! Uh, what's yeah. that? The dream is spiraling out of control. Yeah. It's collapsing now. Amira! 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 <laughs> Amira, are you all right? I don't feel well. <laughs> no, no, no! Please, no! You have made your decision. Now, take this. <sighs> Set him free. A puppet? What's he doing here? You're a human as far as I'm concerned. Everyone's here. Wonderful. What a fine blade. Nagamasa will be thrilled. Uh, uh, this is... my... Uh. Uh, is he alright? <laughs> Come <laughs> on.
All worthless dross will be purged. That's why this won't be the end. stumbled across the Mikawa Flower Festival. Huh? What's a human doing here? We erected the barrier, didn't we? Ah, oh, what a pain. The yokai at the festival began discussing how to drive away the human. Huh? When suddenly, they heard a voice. Oh. Oh. Ah. This is our festival. And the point is to have fun. What difference does it make if a human joins us yokai? <laughs> the speaker appeared to be a prominent figure among the yokai, and when he spoke, the other yokai fell silent. You there, young man, do you drink sake? Uh, yes, I do. Ha! Ah, then join us. We can enjoy tonight's festivities together. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the yokai and samurai celebrated together. The two competed in the highlight of the festival, the Akitsu Hazara. Their spectacular game ended in a draw, and a new friendship was forged. <laughs> I can't believe a human could keep up with me! Witnessing the dynamic powers of the yokai will certainly help hone my swordsmanship. You're a swordsman? Oh, yes. I'm currently traveling the world in search of formidable opponents. Then let's make a deal. We meet for a duel every ten years. What do you say? Hmm. I look forward to it. The samurai was about 25 years old when they met at the festival. They met again 10 years later and remained friends. They spent time together drinking, traveling, and sparring. When they had first met, they merely respected each other. But 10 years later, they became best friends. After another decade, the samurai had reached the pinnacle of his swordsmanship and won their duel by a narrow margin. Kamai was so astonished by his defeat, he gave up drinking and began training to become stronger for their next duel. However, another ten years later, Kamai did not meet the samurai. As it turned out, war had broken out in the south, and the samurai had gone to defend the border. Kamai was unconcerned because 10 years was nothing in a yokai's lifetime. But when they met once again, Kamai discovered that the samurai was already 65 years old. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the samurai's gray hair and scars covering his body. Hey, old friend. Can you still wield the sword? <sighs> I'm getting too old to fight. <sighs> this time, I've come to say goodbye. I see. Then, how about one last game of Akitsu Hazara? <sighs> All right. The samurai gave his best effort during the game, but had to quit halfway through because he was too weak. After putting down his agoita, Kamai remained silent for a long time before letting out a long sigh. <sighs> what a shame. Down. Don't you have an easy way to figure this out? <laughs> you were only designated.
designated as number 36? What a shame. From what I can see, your talents merit a smaller number. Putting aside the validity of the data, it is meaningless to judge individuals based solely on their Nyana energy. What you said to Ilias has now become a memory shared by all members of the Hive. I see it now! You've channeled and amplified their selfish desires! You're trying to destroy my Hive from the inside out! Human minds are not infinitely pliable, and your Hive has stretched many of them to their limit. Once your authority as Overmind starts to wane, it won't be long before your subjects snap back. Is it worth living here like a machine? Being a tool for the rest of my life? As soon as one person begins to have these thoughts, selfishness, doubt, and fear will propagate, thanks to the web of consciousness that you built. At this stage, your so-called hive has already fallen. It's not over yet. I am the Overmind! There has to be a way! It's too late. Once the desires of the Hive accumulate, beyond a certain threshold, they will kill their king. I wouldn't have suffered such a disgraceful defeat if I was the Overmind. My numbers shouldn't be so far down the list! Thrugs is a lie! This isn't what we agreed to! I should be the one in your position! In times gone by, one quarreled oft with Gui Zhang concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. But Rex Lapis declared that Gui Zhang's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. <laughs> Though one was too proud to acknowledge it, in one's heart, one knew that Gui Zhang was indeed the superior talent in the mechanical arts. As for the story between Gui Zhang and Streetward Rambler, that begins with a certain bell. In Gui Zhang's opinion, while mechanisms were no substitute for human composers, they were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetward Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul an emotional enterprise that could never hope to be replicated by machinery. They argued endlessly, until one asked Rex Lapis to intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. Thereafter, one would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods, and soon engulfed the Guili Plains. Gui Zhang was overpowered by the enemy, and fell in battle. When Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. After this, at Streetwood Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, one made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's lit one minute and extinguished the next. But are we adepti so different? Perhaps as dust settles after a storm, we too must one day return to the world below. <laughs> I'm honored to be here on the Iridescence Tour stage. All right, without further ado, I 
I'm Shin Yan. This is her town. <laughs> and this is a little something called. <laughs> Up here blazing trails through the midnight sky, lighting up the world below. And when the crowds all hear my voice, they'll meet the spirit of rock and roll. Let's go! Hey, you butterfly, you too, buzz and by. Guiding your way to the afterlife, opening the path without a fright. Oh! I'll light the fire, watch it blaze across the universe. I'll spit my rhymes, watch your step, or you'll get burned. Hey! Woo! Does anyone have any plans tomorrow? With another year behind us, I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tianchuan footing the bill? I can't miss out on that. <laughs> May the year ahead be a blessed one. I believe it shall be. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I... Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern the likes of which the world has never seen. And you must take it to Liu Ai Harbor to display its magnificence for all. Take it. Please, Kari Bear. It's my fault. I'm so sorry. If only I'd known. It's all... It's all too much. Papa! <gasps> Hmm. 
you played with as a child? <clears throat> the dragon is no more, for Princess Dia has slain it. Its head now hangs above the city gates. Her bravery has brought eternal peace and prosperity to us all. Dia, come on. This is the most important mine. Um, um, you can do it. But Dia, you defeated the dragon. Everyone's waiting for your speech. <sighs> <laughs> Still too shy, huh? All right, I'll do it. I hereby proclaim our victory. Evil shall plague us no more. I hereby proclaim our victory. Evil shall plague us no more. Ever heard of the Hexen Circle? As the spooky name suggests, it's a secret society. Once upon a time, it even challenged the animal Archon himself. But he replied, Let us make music, not war, and resolve our conflicts through song. From then on, the mages would only ever convene in the woods, in the skies, or on the edges of cliffs. At these tea parties, they discussed their stories and secrets and resolved their differences, as the tea and cakes bore witness to their pledge never to fight amongst themselves. Yesterday, I snuffed out the life of my beloved. He had grown old and was extremely sick. He loved me dearly, so I took his fate in my hands and ended his pain. I'm raising a son. Of all the children I had, he's the only one left. <laughs> but I suppose that still makes me a mother. My lifespan is nothing compared to yours, so I wish to leave you with my storybook. Actually, maybe you can pass it on to your children one day. Oh, this looks interesting. Let me scry. My dear sisters, we mustn't let prophecies threaten our bonds of friendship. Even the most frightening witch was once a little girl, and growing up can be so tough. Sometimes we all need to vent our troubles to the wind. Even if the nations go to war, or the sky falls down, the mages' tea parties shall forever be held around this table. be able to see anything if we keep going that way. Hey, look! Something's over there! Is that truly the return you've always dreamed of? 
Lord of Dendro, don't be sad. This is not your home. We go home. Lord of Dendro should also go home. Desires. Awaken. Oh, looks like Layla has seized the diadem. But getting to the goal won't be easy. Competition is heating up. Oh, and here's Kave bringing up the rear. you suffering or will this newfound wealth numb your heart i look forward to your answer all of my research materials are being stored at all huh? i've heard enough my life's enough of a mess already the last thing i need is more suffering keep your mora 
I don't need it. Didn't you say that you saw a lot of people in pain? Well, if that's the case, then your wealth can go to them. Long ago, when plagues ravaged the land, one doctor made a pledge to rid the world of pain and suffering. But even the most ingenious mortal medicine could not stay the tide of disease. And after working tirelessly for many years, even his dearest loved ones fell sick and bade their final farewell. Legends told of an herb lord in Chen Yu Vale who could cure any illness known to mankind. The doctor sought the herb lord, but found only a white snake, its breathing weak and its power all but spent. Sign this contract and let our lives be joined. Then I will impart to you the secret art of healing. But be warned, this art will harm your own health. With means beyond human ken, the doctor could now reverse the process of death. And yet, the time still came to say goodbye. Only now, the one departing was the doctor, his life force spent. His final act in life was to pass on the contract to his final patient, his favorite disciple. The disciple chose to dedicate their life to saving the lives of others. And generation upon generation followed in these footsteps. <coughs> Since I inherited this contract, I've always respected the path taken by my predecessors and followed it myself unquestioningly. That is, until I tried to use the art to save my own disciples, beloved. She begged me not to use up my own life force. She said that this art is a poison chalice, an evil and unnatural practice. She did not wish to sacrifice one life for the sake of another, when both were lives she treasured. Only then did it occur to me. Did I not suffer when my master passed away? just as patients' families do at their loved one's deathbed? Are not the lives cut short by this contract just as worthy of saving as any patients? What is this contract to us? Medicine or poison? Alas, I no longer have enough time left to find the answer. I entrust to your care both Changsheng and this final question. May you find a remedy for this conundrum, which has ailed us so. Time and again, no matter how much I try to warn them or balance their chi, I can never save them. And you? What's your answer? If I abandoned the contract and left you without a host, what would happen? I'd spend my final moments taking a nice nap on Mount Yaojin. Then I'd be reunited with my old friends and your predecessors. Then it's decided. If there's a life in front of me that deserves to be saved, why shouldn't I do everything within my power to save it? <sighs> Once again, it's the same answer. So be it. Close your eyes. Who knows how many more people will take on this contract? None. This contract will end with me.
be wondering why I'm leaving you a letter like this. It's because... Hey, Gulab, I'm here. How are you feeling today? I gotta tell you, I had an idea for another card last night. Huh? What's that you're writing? <laughs> it's nothing. <sighs> okay. Anyway, up for a game? You don't have to visit every day, you know. You should be focusing on your work at the Academia. Hey, enough of that. I'll keep visiting until you've fully recovered. Besides, I can't stand most of the folks at the Academia anyway. Hey, it's your turn. <coughs> Gula, are you okay? <coughs> Garvapitam, you must understand. My Elazar. Hey, don't talk like that. You just need some more rest. <sighs> it's because you won't come to terms with the fact that I don't have long left. Guess what? This game we invented is getting pretty popular here in the hospital. Really? That's great news. Yeah, I've even made a device to help people find other players nearby. Here, this one's for you. This way, you'll be able to keep playing even after I- Just I'm... stop! You're gonna get better, you hear me? I don't need this thing. I don't want it! I imagine the casket of tomes I gave you is probably gathering dust in a corner somewhere. So, this is my last gift to you. I'm sorry that I could only give it to you now. Do you remember when we first met? You were the only one willing to be friends with the kid with Elazar. Now it's my turn to help you make some new friends. This way, I'll always be by your side, my friend.
been fixed. Thank <laughs> you.